Hey guys, welcome to Meals with Maria. I am so excited to share some amazing summer recipes with you today. I'm kind of hiding up in my bedroom because it's very loud downstairs with the kids today. Uh, but I just wanted to give a quick intro and just say these meals are so beautiful and so flavorful. You're gonna love them. I'm gonna post all the recipes in the description box below because you are gonna wanna make them. Enjoy. This is a rosemary roasted salmon with potatoes and asparagus. And I'm just calling it sheet pan balsamic salmon because that's basically what it is. So we're just gonna start off by slicing up about a teaspoon of fresh rosemary. I'm sure you could use dried if you have it, but in this recipe, I really would recommend getting fresh if you can. It's super easy to grow herbs or buy herbs that you can actually grow in your kitchen. So think about doing that. I've always also had an arrow garden. So as always, I will post that down in my description box if you're interested in growing one of those yourself. So just wanna slice this up into a small mince basically, then transfer that to a small bowl or measuring cup like I'm doing. And here I'm gonna add three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Again, you wanna try and use a better olive oil in this case, but if you, have it, if you don't have it, go ahead and use a canola oil. And then two teaspoons of minced garlic. I had the pre-cut stuff, but I'm sure fresh would give you even more flavor. You can see how thick this sauce is, like it's so full of flavor and delicious, just with the garlic and the rosemary. Then the recipe calls for one and a quarter pounds of Yukon Gold potatoes. I kind of eyeballed this and said that four looked like a decent amount for us, and it was the perfect amount for four people uh, for the meal, and it fit on the pan very well. So you just wanna slice these up into, I would say, a medium dice. Um, we want these to be kind of like, almost like a home fry. Uh, that way they will cook perfectly on the sheet pan in the right amount of time. You don't wanna cut them too small or else they'll cook too fast. And if you cook, cut them too big, it would take too long and you would end up overcooking the rest. The important thing when you're cooking like a sheet pan meal is that everything cooks at the right speed and temperature so that you're not overcooking or undercooking something different. Once your potatoes are diced, you're gonna to wanna to add one tablespoon of the oil, rosemary, and garlic mixture. And then I'm gonna mix that around, make sure that everything is fully covered and add about a teaspoon of salt as well as pepper. I'll spread these out evenly on a large rimmed baking sheet and you're gonna bake these at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. While the potatoes are getting started, I'm gonna start trimming the asparagus. I'm just gonna cut the ends off of the asparagus because that's like a really crunchy part and you really don't wanna eat that. I mean, I think some people do, but I'm not into it. So I just cut those off and set them aside. They're great for using for like a uh, vegetable stock or even in like a juice or something, but not necessarily good uh, for this dish. So I'm cutting the asparagus into thirds and I'm actually gonna place this into the same bowl that I used for the potatoes. That way I can save on dishes. And I'm gonna add a, another tablespoon of the oil mixture to the asparagus and mix thoroughly to get fully covered. I'm also gonna add some salt and pepper to this too. It says a quarter teaspoon, but I think I just sprinkled on what I had. Now what's a salmon dish without lemon? So I'm just slicing my lemon into rounds and getting that started as well. Now the recipe calls for about 20 ounces of salmon, which is probably about what I have. I think it asked for fillets, but this is how mine was cut and it worked out perfectly. So I'm just taking the rest of the oil mixture and spreading that over the top of the salmon. 
all that is like so delicious together the rosemary garlic oil really i've been using that mixture on everything since i started making this recipe i'm really into it uh, i've made the potatoes multiple times since and i'm like what's better than rosemary garlic and oil really and then i'm gonna make a sauce that we're gonna put over the salmon uh, when we're partway cooked so calls for two tablespoons of balsamic glaze which i have here and that's i think pastine brand and then it adds uh one tablespoon of it says grainy mustard which i did not have so i used um, some dijon and it ended up tasting delicious you can see i took a little piece here and uh my son julian wanted to try it and he thought wow that was delicious he really really liked it so it was a great way to get him kind of encouraged to eat the meal you can see everything is ready here and once my potatoes come out after the 20 minute mark we're going to put everything on the sheet pan and start roasting it up with those potatoes it's kind of cool because you get to put the potatoes in the oven first they get that first set of cooking and then you get to add everything else and that way everything cooks at the right temperature you can see how the potatoes are cooking for the first half and they're looking really really good so we're actually going to move these over to the side of the pan and then add only the asparagus to start and I'm gonna cook the asparagus for about three minutes in the oven. And that's just gonna give it a nice green look and get it started. And then we're gonna add our salmon after that. it went in the asparagus has now come out and we're going to move everything off to the side even more which is fine at this point because everything's gotten kind of a good cook so it doesn't need to be spread out as much even though it seems like there's kind of like piles um it worked out just fine so you just want to put the salmon in the center of the pan and then we're going to lay the lemon across all the vegetables and the salmon and cook that for five minutes After five minutes, I'm gonna take the lemons kind of off the top of the salmon and then brush the salmon with one teaspoon of the balsamic and mustard glaze. Uh, just putting this over. So we're gonna cook this for another five minutes at this point until the vegetables are tender and the salmon is just cooked through. And here's the finished product. This was so amazing and delicious. The whole family raved about it and I just love that it's really healthy too. It's such a nice summer meal. It feels so fresh and light and I, we just absolutely loved it. It was great because the kids had had salmon before and didn't like it, but this time, I think because of that balsamic glaze, I really got them to try it and they ended up saying that it was quite good. So I felt like it was a huge win for our family. The next meal I made was a Mediterranean lunch bowl. These went so fast. They were so good for lunch and I couldn't wait to have them. These meals are awesome because they require no cooking on the stove. I've just taken two full scallions and I'm gonna cut up the whole thing. It's kind of up to you. I know a lot of people like to use just the greens and save the whites for when you are cooking on the stove. I don't mind. I think that the whole thing is delicious. So I decided to use the entire scallion in mine. So we're gonna put those into a bowl. We're gonna end up putting kind of all the ingredients that are gonna go on top of our quinoa in the bowl. 
Um, in the meantime, while I am slicing these vegetables, I am cooking up about a cup of dry quinoa on the stove and I'll put a quinoa uh, recipe, or I think the quinoa recipe is in the recipe that I'll link below for you too. Um, just super simple with water and quinoa on the stove. So I have about a cup of uh, diced or um, sliced um, grape tomatoes, and then one can of chickpeas or garbanzo beans, whatever you want to call them, and just mixing that together. And overall, that's basically our little salad. And then I'm going to pour on about two tablespoons of Greek dressing, however much you like. The recipe I have does have a dressing that you can make with these um, by yourself. Personally, I was just wanted to go quickly and I didn't feel like making the dressing and I happen to have great dressing and it worked out really well. And something I really love about these bowls is that they are not only hummus, but you also add tzatziki sauce, which I think is just delicious. I could be saying that wrong, but I think that's how you say it. Um, so adding the hummus and the tzatziki was just so amazing. And you can see that I'm gonna put some quinoa on the bottom of these bowls, just fully cooked up. And then I'm gonna end up adding the uh, chickpea and tomato and onion mixture over the top. And the thing that makes these so good is that there's just so much flavor because there is dressing and hummus and tzatziki. <laughs> and so they're not boring. Um, I know that quinoa personally, I don't know, not always my favorite. It sometimes feels like it just kind of sops everything up and I don't really get a lot of flavor, but in these I got a lot. So I was able to make two lunch bowls out of this. And then I also ate uh, a bowl that I didn't put in a Tupperware container uh, that same day for lunch. So uh, they were they were just really good and I highly recommend them and you can see how quick it was to make them. It's such a great summer lunch idea. Next recipe I'm gonna make is a grilled scallop with an avocado corn salad. And I also serve some couscous with that. So in order to make the corn salad, you're gonna need five fresh ears of corn. Once I made it personally, I, I think you probably could have just gone with canned corn too and it would have been good. Um, but it was fun to cook up the corn on the grill. So I'm just putting about a tablespoon of olive oil over the corn and putting some chili powder. So this is maybe like a teaspoon of chili powder and I'm just rubbing this onto the corn here. And we're gonna end up just slight putting this onto the grill. Uh, for a few minutes on each side. You wanna cook it for about six to eight minutes total. And then after it comes off the grill, we're just gonna let it cool off. Now, unfortunately, I missed a bit of footage here, but I did, in the meantime, make the dressing for the corn and avocado salad. And I'm just pouring in two tablespoons of cilantro to two tablespoons of sliced chives. And I think I actually used scallions because that's what I had. Two tablespoons of chopped red onion, a quarter cup of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of cumin, and a half a teaspoon of coriander as well as a quarter cup of lime juice. Now the recipe also calls for a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I didn't add those just because I have young kids and they are not down with the spicy, uh, but you can absolutely add those and I'm sure it would be delicious. And then I am just slicing up one avocado at a medium dice. You can see this avocado was perfect. It was absolutely delicious in the salad. And here you can see the corn coming off of the grill. It looks really good. And I'm gonna let that cool while I slice up the avocado. Now, you know, is this the safest way to cut an avocado? Maybe not. My husband always says, you're gonna get avocado hand. And I'm like, uh, it's fine. Like I have knife control, it'll be okay. Uh, but if you have better ways, feel free to comment below and let me know your special avocado slicing method so that maybe I don't want to slice my hand one of these days. And so I'm just gonna add the avocado into the dressing here. And our next step is gonna be to add the corn. Now before I add the corn, I'm just gonna let it cool a little bit more. I am gonna get my scallops ready. So I have about a pound of scallops here. Now you can see that some are orange and some are white. Now, can you guess why this is? I have never seen ones like this before. I had to look it up, I had to Google it. Um, and I found out that 
it's because some of them are female and some of them are male. And there is some sort of agreement that maybe the, I think it's the orange ones, like the female ones taste a little bit sweeter or fattier, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I grilled them up and I, I couldn't really tell the difference. And so I grilled those for about two minutes on each side. They had some um, oil and uh, salt and pepper on them and they cooked up perfectly. And here is the avocado and corn salad. Unfortunately, I didn't get footage of me cutting the corn off the cob, but believe me, it wasn't really pretty anyway. I served this with some garlic couscous. I just followed the instructions on the package. It was super easy and it was a huge hit. For the boys, I actually just left a piece of corn intact and cut it in half because they like it on the cob. The next meal is a Weight Watchers barbecue chicken salad, which just looked so delicious in the picture. I was like, I have to try this. And it's super interesting because you end up making your own barbecue sauce for this. And as you can see, this is such a colorful salad. Like how could you not want to eat it? <laughs> So to get this recipe started, I'm going to start by making the barbecue sauce and we're going to use a half a cup of just canned tomato sauce. I happen to have Goya. Then one tablespoon of honey mustard, one tablespoon of barbecue seasoning mix, two teaspoons of brown sugar, then we're going to add one teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now the recipe calls for a pound of chicken breast, but I probably have closer to two pounds and the chicken breasts I have are really thick. So I decided to cut them in half and trim off any excess fat. That's gonna give the perfect amount of chicken for my family of four to each have one slice of chicken. Actually, the kids are gonna have, they just split one, they don't eat too much. Um, and then we'll have an extra one left over or if Dan wants to have some extra on his. So I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper and then I'm gonna add these to a high heat grill. Personally, mine, has a temperature knob on it so it goes up to 500 degrees and I'm gonna cook them at 500 degrees for about two minutes on each side and then we'll put some of the barbecue sauce on. In the meantime I'm gonna get the salad started by cutting up some of the romaine lettuce. You can either cut this with a knife like I'm doing it doesn't bother me at all but I know that some people tend to believe that it gets bitter if you don't tear it so tear it up if you want it's really all up to you how you want to do it. I personally like a really lettucey salad so I'm using quite a bit of lettuce um, but I know some people like a little bit less, so all up to you how you do this. That's the awesome thing about salads. You can kind of make them your own and, you know, somewhat follow the recipe, but just put like the same ingredients in and as much as you like of each. And there you have it. So here is my chicken after two minutes on each side. And I'm just going to put some of that barbecue sauce over each side and baste it up. And within a couple more minutes, this should be cooked up. You just want to make sure that your chicken is definitely cooked all the way through not one of those things that you want to have a little pink in the middle or anything like that. Um, but this cooked up so fast and so easy just because they were thin slices of chicken breast. And I find that when you're not cooking those big ones, they come out so much juicier too. Like if you cook one of those big chicken breasts, it just takes forever and they get so dry. So I pretty much always slice mine in half and I find that it's much better that way. So for the toppings on the salad, you just need two cups of diced grape tomatoes as well as one red pepper sliced up as well as a quarter cup of sliced scallions.
So in addition to my tomatoes, peppers, and scallions, I've also rinsed off some black beans in a can and opened a can of corn and drained that. We also have some semi-soft goat cheese and we'll be covering the salad with some light ranch dressing. And actually, I think I probably just used full fat ranch dressing because that's what we had. But here you can see that I put all my diced vegetables on. Now I'm putting on some corn, some black beans. Go ahead and make this what you want. If you're more of a bean lover, add more beans. If you want more corn, add more corn. However you wanna do it, that's the amazing thing about salads. You can make it your own. And here I'm just gonna crumble up some of that goat cheese. I just have like a log of it. You can definitely buy crumbled goat cheese too. I think for some reason I did not have the ability to get that this time. And I'm just putting it over the top and yep, fingers are getting messy. That's just how I'm doing it. It's what we're doing and it turned out just fine. Next meal is a grilled bruschetta chicken and look how amazing this turned out. I feel like I've been wanting to make something like this for years and I finally got around to it. So I just have three large tomatoes and I'm dicing them up. Now you may want to remove some of the centers to make the bruschetta less, I don't know, like watery but i really don't mind that i just love a whole tomato i think that the flavor is in the whole thing so i'm slicing up my entire tomato and dicing it small to make an amazing bruschetta mixture Now that my tomatoes are chopped, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of sliced um, basil, but honestly, you can add more than that. Like, go to town, add as much basil as you like. <laughs> the basil's really, really good. Uh, personally, you know, go to town, whatever you want to do. And then I'm just going to top this with a sprinkle of salt and pepper two teaspoons of minced garlic, similar to the basil. Do whatever you want on this. Add as much as you like. If you're a garlic lover, there's really not gonna be too much in here. Especially if you have fresh garlic, it's gonna taste even better. I do have like the minced stuff that I just had in my fridge, but if you're cutting up a fresh piece of garlic, you're gonna be in good shape. Now I'm doing the same thing that I did with the uh, Weight Watchers chicken salad. I have cut two chicken breasts in half and I'm sprinkling with olive oil, salt, and pepper, as well as some Italian seasoning, about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning on these. And then I'm just gonna grill these up again, about two minutes on each side on high. And uh, then I'm gonna put some fresh mozzarella right over the top. I think it recommended like one slice per each, but I was like, we're gonna do two because can't go wrong with that. And as I said earlier, I made the potatoes again because I was like, that's gonna go so good with my bruschetta chicken. Might as well serve the potatoes again from the original uh, salmon recipe that we did at the beginning of the video. And then you can see after a few minutes, once our mozzarella has melted, the chicken has come off and I'm just gonna cover this with the bruschetta mixture. And after the chicken is covered with the bruschetta, I'm using that balsamic glaze, the same one that I used for the salmon the Pastine uh, brand, but I think they have like all different brands. You know, I know I've seen even like store-bought uh, store brands of that these days. You can get it pretty much anywhere. And just covering this chicken up, sprinkling it with, drizzling it with the glaze and sprinkling it with Parmesan cheese. And you'll see that this is like the most beautiful thing <laughs> you have ever seen. I'm in love with this dish and I can't wait to make it again for the family. Um, yeah, overall, 
all of these meals were just so, so fantastic and everybody just enjoyed them. And my husband was like, wow, you're really killing it with the meals this week. And I was like, yes, I picked like specific summer ones and just ones that looked so pretty. I mean, look at that. How can you not want to eat that for dinner? And it was just so good with our potatoes. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching today. If you can please like this video and subscribe if you've not already. I make videos like this. I do extreme grocery budget challenges. I'll post another summer type meal video up for you. Some delicious stuff um, as well at the end here. And I just want to say thank you and I'll see you guys all very soon. I've been